Hey guys. So today I'll, I'll show you briefly a quick introduction to graphs, and then we're going to walk through a zero Ruby source code, and at the end we will try to add a class in using C, a Ruby class using C. So basically define a data, native data type uh, straight from directly from C and use it from Ruby. Uh, so why graphs are important? So I'll, let me show you a quick demo. This is my, my social network. Uh, this is my Facebook uh, uh, network, uh, social network that I applied a very simple algorithm, which is uh, connected components, strongly connected components. And because of uh, uh, the way how people are connect with each other on Facebook, it, you can see that it created multiple clusters. And for example, these guys, uh, uh, you can clearly see the companies that I work for, because all the people who work at those companies are strongly connected between themselves. And this is actually a very simple algorithm that you can run. You basically run a uh, depth first uh, search algorithm on, uh, on a graph uh, twice in two different directions. And at the end, you end up with a clearly marked uh, nodes that uh, basically they, they are marked by the network that they belong to. Uh, so th there's different companies that I work for. There's my family. So this, this can show you how even with really trivial, uh, uh, trivial algorithms, you can extract a lot of data from your, from your social networks. OK, so how, how do we represent uh, graphs in code? So this is just, just an expert from an algorithm book. So we have a simple graph with five nodes. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not fully connected. And uh, uh, the way we would represent it in memory, one of the efficient ways of representing a graph in memory is using linked list. So right here, you can see uh, a list of lists. And basically, for each node, you have a list of nodes that that particular node is connected to. So for example, node 1 is connected to, to 2 and 5. And you can clearly see here that uh, 1 is connected to 2 and 5, and it's ended. The, the linked list is ended. This is, this is more based on, on C. But in Ruby, it's the same, the same principle. You can create linked lists using arrays or, 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 or hashes. You can, you can actually use hashes to, to store uh, 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 graphs in, 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 in Ruby. OK, so what is, I'm going to show you, uh, I choose as a demonstration uh, breath first search. And just to familiar, you know, uh, refresh your memory, uh, this, how, this is how a breath first search algorithm works. So this is an example of a grid graph. Uh, it's a ve it's very good graph to demonstrate this algorithm because you will, you will see that it looks like basically we are flooding the, the whole graph with red pigment. And the way it works, you start with a source node, which is marked here as red. And the first thing that you do, you explore all its neighbors, and then neighbors of those neighbors, and so forth. So you can see, first we, 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 uh, we explore first four nodes that are connected to it directly, then their, their neighbors, and, and as far as we can go, uh, and we end when we explore the whole graph. So what you can do uh, using this approach, you can, for example, find nodes that have cer certain elements. So imagine that this is my uh, uh, social graph. I can find people, for example, who have uh, uh, a lot of followers or I can find people with certain uh, skills, like people who uh, put on their profile that they, for example, use Ruby. OK, so that, that pretty much finishes my uh, quick introduction. And let's take a look at uh, C-Ruby source code. So when I, was, when I started looking at, at Ruby, you know, I like the fact that uh, how it's, it's a great language. But I wanted to understand how it actually works. And one of the ways you can do it, you can actually look at the zero resource code. And as an exercise to facilitate that, that exploration, I, I said to myself, why don't I implement a graph data structure just like we have uh, an array or hash? And before I, I was able to do it, I started exploring CRuby. And I want to show you how easy it is to actually understand what's going on. Uh, in, in the, in, although it is C, but because of our knowledge of Ruby and our uh, you know, knowledge of the API, you can really quickly orient yourself in the source code. And uh, I was able literally to add, start playing with it, adding different methods and new methods within a couple, literally within an hour. So let's take a look at uh, uh, first uh, class, which is array. It's in array.c. And what you will see in uh, all these C classes, pretty much all of them have this uh, init array, init underscore something uh, procedure. And what this is, is basically 
This is where the class is actually declared. And in this case, uh, this is where in C, uh, array class is declared. So you can see here we have this really nice method. Uh, the code is also written in a very descriptive way, so it's very easy to understand uh, uh, what's going on. So first we def define class, just like in, in Ruby source code, right? Class array. This is pretty much equivalent of it. So we declare a class with with uh, with, uh, with array name, and that the class inherits from the object, right? Just exactly as uh, the, the array class as we know it from, uh, from our everyday, uh, everyday life. Next, what we see uh, is that uh, this class actually includes module enumerable, right? And you can see equivalent uh, code in Ruby there. So uh, this is pretty, it was really, really simple for me to add a new class, like widget, uh, just by literally implementing those two those two methods, uh, actually only this one, and, uh, and one more initialize here. Okay, so you will find this kind of uh, initialization and creation and declaration of classes in almost every, every, every uh, CRuby class. This will be in hash, fixed nums, big nums. Uh, next, next uh, there are two important methods here, which are, you can see we, there is an allocation, uh, uh, function and initialization function. Uh, the reason why uh, alloc is actually important is because we are in C, in C, so we have to allocate the memory by ourselves. We cannot depend on uh, you know the, the services that Ruby provides us. So you have to actually declare uh, declare and allocate memory on your own. And then we have this class, which is initialize, which simply is equivalent of uh, of array new, right? And you can pass this, min this minus one at the end, it actually indicates that to this method, you can uh, pass in variable number of uh, parameters. And as you know from the array API, you can actually pass, pass multiple, uh, uh, multiple arguments to array.new, you can specify the capacity, also you can uh, specify a block that will be called uh, to initialize all the elements in the array. Okay, so let's take a look, quick look at the uh, first method, which is uh, array alloc. Here we go. So there's nothing really uh, difficult about this. Basically what we do is, it's a static function that returns value, and most of your, of your functions will actually, if you, if you try to extend C Ruby, uh, most of your functions will actually return value, which is a reference to an object. First thing that we do, we create a new object, and you can see that it's referencing our array structure, which is a C struct that I will show you in a minute. And we do some uh, object setup. We set a couple of flags on the objects. Uh, uh, these two are actually very, very specific to the array. They are not. You, you can. Uh, you don't have to do it in your class. You, you will not need. You will. There will be no need for you to do it in your your simple classes. Uh, and that's pretty much, pretty much it. And this actually creates and allocates the memory for you. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the initialization class, initialization function. So the initialization is a little bit longer, and that's because, uh, as you know, array.new accepts a variable number of parameters, and it also accepts a block. So Let's go to some and look at something that's simple. So, for example, focus your uh, attention on this one, this this block. So you can see that if number of arguments passed to the array that new is one, which indicates that we are passing the size of the array that you want to allocate, it actually what it does, it checks the size of the array, but then actually replaces the array, replaces the array with. Uh, uh, basically swaps array, uh, it's a uh, Ruby array replace, it's a utility method that basically reallocates the array for you with, with given size. Okay, so next thing that you want to look at is, you can see that there is a lot of this defined method uh, calls. And what they do, they actually link C functions to your Ruby source code. So for example, if you look at something familiar, first, right? So something that you call in Ruby by a.first, 
the way it gets linked to the actual C implementation is via this define method uh, procedure here. And what it does, it actually links the C array, C class array object with, uh, with the name of the method first, and it links it to this function, uh, Ruby array first. And if you look at this method, there's nothing really special about it as well. So you can see that uh, it, it follows the, the, the traditional C convention that where you pass the uh, argu number of arguments first and uh, here, followed by an array of the arguments. And so you can access actually how many, how many arguments have been passed and based on that you can make decisions. So for example, in, in this case, uh, think about when you are using uh, a dot first and you don't pass any elements, you expect it to either return nil, right, when the array is empty, array list length is uh, equal to zero, or the first element, zeroth element of the array, right? Or if you pass an element, you want to get the first, first n elements. That's facilitated by this function. And uh, if, you, if you just open this array.c uh, uh, file and just browse through, through the, uh, the bottom of the file and look at all those mappings, you will find all the methods that we use every day when we are using uh, 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 array objects. OK, so the next thing. When I, was when I was talking about the allocation, I told you about the struct Ruby R array, and this is actually defined in a different, uh, different file called Ruby. It's include file ruby.h, and here it is. So even without any knowledge of, of, of C, uh, you can clearly see that each array is an actually has the structure uh, R basic, which is basic object. Uh, we can take a look at it. So basic object has only two uh, members, which is flags. For example, flags are used during garbage collection. So all the objects in use will be marked as uh, uh, in use by, by basically flag, uh, flags, it's, it's a, almost like a bitmap. And class is just reference to the class that this object belongs to. Next thing, so that was basic object, right? Sorry. That was basic object. And the next to it, you have, uh, error object, right? And this is, this is the actual object that, that you usually inherit from if you don't specify uh, the, the parent class uh, when you declare a class in, in Ruby. And you can see that it, sti it still uses our object, but it also has this access, uh, it, this, it has this struct that includes uh, uh, num iv as well as this pointer. And what this is, it's the number of ivars that you have in your class. And this is actually array to all those ivars. So you can, in C, you can have actually access to all your IVARs. Okay, let's go back to, to the array. So what array has something, everything that you would expect from an array, right? It has an, a, a length as well as capacity and it has a pointer to, to where the actual array elements are stored. And there's also really interesting optimization here if you, if you look here, if you look at this piece of code, it basically creates a really small array directly on our array, and its size is three. You can see it here. So basically what it means that if you create an empty array or, or an array that has less than, less than four elements, so three or less, it will not actually create anything on the heap. It will actually store that, those values directly on our array. So this means that the performance-wise, uh, uh, it's just much faster because in our code, you usually, we usually create arrays that are empty, right? That's what, that's what we start with. And there's a lot of uh, empty arrays, and there is actually, uh, it's, much, it's very beneficial to, to have optimized code path for arrays that are very small. Okay, so this pretty much covers the declaration, declaration of the uh, array as well as uh, declaration of the, of the memory that we create for it. So the next thing that you have to worry about when you are creating a new type in, uh, in C is uh, memory allocation, which happens in, in gc.c. And uh, as you know, uh, uh, Ruby is a dynamic language, and it uses garbage collection. And it's using mark and sweep 
uh, garbage collection. And what it means is that if Ruby runs out of memory and you want to allocate a new object, it will, it will go through all the objects that are in use and mark them as, uh, as in use, and that's, that's the mark part of the uh, uh, garbage collection process. And then the next step is sweep, which is the allocation of all those objects, and reclaim, it will reclaim the memory for all the objects that have not, not been marked as in use. So for example, I'm not going to go in, into a lot of detail here, but I'll show you something that's really easy to understand, which happens for the array. So you can see here that there's this type T array. And what it does here, for example, uh, is array, we, we get the length of the array, and we actually go through all the elements of the array, and we mark them as in use. So uh, what happens here is that if you have containers like an array or hash or any, or any <coughs> custom tip that you're going to write, you are responsible for marking all the objects that are, that are in use as in use. And uh, so they wouldn't be garbage collected from under you. Uh, another thing that you can see here is, you know, this is how hash does it. Uh, all the built-in classes actually have, uh, have a, a uh, uh, they, they handle uh, in various ways the, the mark part of the, uh, of, the pro of the garbage collection process. Okay, so this was really quick introduction how, how the array uh, is implemented in C. So, I, uh, I went ahead and basically implemented my own widget, which is ex which I used array as my prototype, and I tried to get it to work with GC and uh, all the memory allocation uh, requirements of uh, CRuby. So you can see here that I created define a class widget that uh, you know inherits from object. I also declared an allocation method that allocates memory for my object, and I also uh, created a couple of C methods: the construct and you know widget that new. Uh, I also added inspect and I aliased inspect to, to string, as well as cr I created a couple of uh, uh, bre breath first search uh, implementation using widget. And uh, I can show you how it's done here. For example, allocation. So here's, as I said, it's pretty much three lines, three lines of code. That's all you have to do to actually allocate an object. So I have my custom struct, our widget, that I'll show you in a minute, and I, I basically only declare this uh, uh, t-widget uh, constant, and I was able to basically allocate an object. Uh, next thing, initialization. This is basically widget.new. So I only handle one argument. So what I do, I first convert the first argument from uh, from from Ruby object here. So num to long, what it does, you have two, two, there's a lot of utility methods that you can use to convert between Ruby objects and C, uh, C data types. And in this case, I'm able to convert like something like fixed num into a long. So I can get the actual requested length of the, of the graph that's encapsulated in the widget. And I do the same thing here. And I, you know, I create a graph that's all zeros with the size uh, uh, given wh when I create it, uh, when I request uh, widget that new, and I, on top of that, I create the the grid graph and I set a pointer to the grid graph that was created. So, this also required me to add uh, in here my widget struct, which basically has reference to our basic. It has a length. It has a graph, and uh, and here, so this is not complete, but this basically prints every time there is a mark, uh, uh, mark, uh, uh, GC mark uh, 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 face. I, I basically print that my my object was re my widget was requested to be GC marked. So this is this is a one way of doing it in Ruby, uh, in C Ruby. And it's kind of complicated. You can definitely tell that there's a lot of things that you have to be careful, especially with memory management in GC. It's, 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 though, it, though, it's a very good exercise because what you can, you can do, you can really learn how Ruby works, like C Ruby works, what's going on, how the memory is allocated. And you can also exp, you know, experience, uh, by looking at the code, all those little bit optimizations that have been added to make C Ruby faster. But there is also a much faster way to get to that, uh, to that point. So if you, if you clone uh, Ruby uh, Git, GitHub repo, 
you will see that there is a lot of uh, subfolders, but one that's really interesting is this ext uh, folder, where you will find a lot of classes that we, that, that we are familiar with, like for example, psych, psych, they are all implemented as extensions to Ruby, but they are written in C. For example, psych was, is written in C, uh, at least partially. And uh, you can follow this path, which requires you only to create two files. Uh, and it's really, the one is really, really simple. And you can also use, there is a helper, uh, there's three helper methods that CRuby provides to you that's, u that's using data data uh, object that basically creates an adapter. On top of your C structs, it creates an adapter that is aware of the garbage collection, and it's a good, good citizen of the garbage, collected wor garbage collection wor word. Uh, so the first file that you have to create is this uh, extension conf that uh, Ruby. If you have created gem or, or a library that uses C, you already probably are familiar with this file. The only thing that you have to do is basically name it. So I, I name it adjacent list graph. And uh, what it will do, it will actually create the make file for you. If, if you have wor ever worked with C, uh, you probably remember the C file, make, make files are pretty difficult, especially if you have a lot of dependencies. And this pretty much takes care of almost everything. All you have to, literally, you have to, you, you have to write those two lines of code and, and you are done. It will create the, the proper make file for you. And the next file is very similar to the widget widget.c, uh, it's even simpler. So we still have this init method. The only, the only important thing is that this identifier, adjacency list graph, matches with this, right? They have to be the same, the same because otherwise uh, uh, CRuby will not be able to initialize your class. So what I'm doing here, I'm defining a class, you know, C adjacency list graph that inherits from object. I create the allocation, uh, allocation function, as well as uh, you know, basically CI adjacency graph, list graph, dot new. And I have one method that executes breadth first search graph, uh, breadth first search on that uh, adjacency list graph. Uh, we can quickly take a look at the allocation. So what's the most important here is that this date, uh, uh, data make struct is the helper that CRuby pro provides, uh, provides us that basically uh, provides you an object adapter on top of your CRuby struct. And the only thing that you have to do, you have to provide the C type that you are using. In this case, it's a struct called graph uh, underscore T. You have to provide a function that will be called during the mark fa phase of the garbage collection. And you also have to provide a function that will be called where, where the memory has to be freed. And you can see that I have those methods here. So this one doesn't have to do anything because I do not allocate any Ruby objects. Everything lives in C in my case. And you know, when I, when, when I have to free the memory, I basically extract the pointer to the graph and I free it because previously I, I basically malloc the, uh, I malloc the graph. Uh, <laughs> and that's pretty much it except the last function which is graph. So, this is the, the, the high-level function that interfaces my Ruby code with low-level breadth-first search implementation in C. So I'm using here data get struck, which is part of the CRuby API, or what it does. Once I allocate it and kind of created this, this shield on top of uh, uh, CRuby structure, I can use the data get struck to extract the, the data, the, uh, to get to the C data directly. It will basically populate that uh, star graph uh, uh, pointer for me. And I, then I can start accessing that graph. You can see here graph, uh, I'm getting the, the length of the graph. Then, then I, uh, uh, I run the uh, C, pure C implementation of the, uh, of the breadth first search. And the last thing that I have to do, so you have to remember that so far we were only in, we were working in C. If I would pass that data, Ruby wouldn't even know what to do with it because it's tightly packed longs you know, in an array, in a chunk of memory. So what we have to do, we have to actually get that data and convert it to a Ruby array. So in this case, what I do, basically I call rb underscore array underscore new, which basically creates for me a Ruby array. Uh, 
Uh, then what you have to do, you have to be very careful with garbage. At this point, you, you have to be a little bit careful with garbage collection because this is something that uh, Mike Delasio, who, who works at Pivotal, he suggested that, uh, that I should do this. Basically what it does is uh, it marks this trace variable that I declared here that it should not be garbage collected because what happens here on, on this line is I'm creating a lot of new fixed nums and every time you create a new, you, you, you new a new object uh, uh, in Ruby, uh, even through long to num, you, you run a risk that a garbage collection will run. Uh, and this will actually prevent, it, prevent the trace from being gar garbage collected from under you. So then you basically have a, have, a, you have a loop that grabs all the C Ruby values, long values, and adds them to the array as fixed nums. Then I just unregister trace, free the memory that I allocated in C, and return the trace. And I can, this trace is now a fully featured Ruby, uh, Ruby array that I can use in my Ruby code. And this is pretty much all you have to do. And this is, so why, why I've been doing this? I kind of knew that C will be faster than Ruby because, uh, for various reasons. And I, I run a couple of tests uh, comparing pure, uh, Pure C implementation, pure Ruby implementation with C Ruby implementation, and using the same algorithm. So basically, I'm, I'm following the same steps. The only difference that I'm, the only difference is that I'm not using objects, but I'm using uh, basically memory cells uh, in C. Uh, and I knew it's going to be faster, and uh, I was able to run some benchmarks. And uh, so here. So when you compare it and run it, when you run both algorithms, both implementations on, sure. Uh, when you run it on a graph with you know, 256 by 256, uh, which is 65,000 nodes, uh, C implementation only ta ta takes roughly 10 milliseconds. And Ruby is already at one minute. And so uh, C is pretty much 100 times faster. Uh, when you go a little bit bigger and, and you go, uh, you know, you process a graph with one million nodes, uh, then Ruby takes, start takes, taking uh, basically minutes. Uh, and obviously, when you go in, in much higher, it just, it just, uh, it just takes, takes days in Ruby. Uh, when in, in C, it takes uh, roughly hours. So why is this happening? Why C is so much faster than, than Ruby? Uh, the problem is that when you, for example, allocate all the 65,000 nodes, when you are doing it in Ruby, you are actually allocating 65,000 objects. And objects, each object is, is very expensive when you're creating it, and especially if you're creating thousands of them, then Ruby is starting to, starting to show, show its inefficiency when dealing with a lot of data. And another thing is that objects take usually more memory than basic uh, C uh, data types. So if, you, if you're allocating 65,000 uh, uh, objects, uh, they, they take more memory uh, and uh, uh, you know, once you start running the, the, pro the processor when it runs, it, it invalidates all the level one, two, three caches, and also all the, it, the CPU, all the branching uh, prediction, and all the optimization that CPU has uh, are kind of uh, lose, you're losing their utility. And when you run really tight code in C, C is able to take advantage of the CPU optimization and memory caching, and therefore, really quickly, C uh, is able to outperform uh, pretty much every uh, object in the language. Uh, and you can see it definitely here. So, so what, what's the conclusion that I would like to uh, uh, tell you? Well, the, the first thing is that CRuby is actually really easy to understand. You saw when just by looking at array.c, you really quickly can, can understand what's going on, wh wh what's going on, wh what kind of methods are implemented, what they are doing. So you can really quickly get your bearings. Another thing, the only complicated part is GC, dealing with garbage collection. But what you can do, the second method that I showed you by using a, a data, uh, data object, data op, uh, the wrap, wrapper, data wrapper, you can uh, simplify that. And uh, really quickly, you can write, rewrite your code that is, was slow in Ruby and rewrite it in C, and still have your high abstractions in Ruby where you are really productive and uh, take advantage of speed of C. and implement all your number crunching in C. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs>